Hey everybody, Zach here. Just want to mention that my first degree is in electrical engineering and I took uh, at least half a dozen, if not more of these courses, circuits one, circuits two, electronic circuits, physics two, microprocessor applications. Anyways, doesn't matter. What matters is, do you understand this? So here we go. To learn how to deal with Kirchhoff rules to rules of circuits and resistors in general, here's the page we need to know. So some ground rules, no pun intended. Get it? Ground rules? Ground? Never mind. Okay. So first of all, you have to know that when you're tracing a path through a circuit, you're either dealing with a current going through a resistor or going through a battery or voltage or EMF. If you're tracing a path with the current, so again, that arrow means you're tracing a path with the current, that means you're going to lose that IR. You're going to lose that voltage. If you're going against it, well, then you're going to gain back that IR. So the whole point of a resistor is it's trying to resist the flow of current. So as a result, you lose when you go through it that voltage. If you go backwards, then you're just going in reverse. For a battery, whatever terminal you leave. So if I'm leaving the positive, you're adding. If you're leaving the negative, you're subtracting. The other thing you need to know is the current going in is going to equal the current going out. And for any closed loop, meaning if you start and end in the same place, same place meaning junction, then the um, voltage difference is going to equal zero. Series will have the same current because series is along a single wire. So that's the same current going through that entire wire. Parallel is going to have the same voltage or potential drop. That's your ground rules. So make sure you know this as we apply to the following question. So given the following circuit, I need to make sure you see what I see. The first question here is, how many wires are there? There are three. The one in the middle, this one right here, the one on top, and the one on bottom. You need to be able to see there's three wires, which means there's going to be three currents. There's two junctions, the left and the right. So my goal here is to solve for those three currents, and I'm going to check by going from left to right, and I should get the same potential difference going across all three wires from left to right, or right to left, but I'm going to be consistent left to right. So here we go. Two junctions. Left or right doesn't matter. I'm going to pick the right one. It's arbitrary. Next up, three currents. I like to have one going in and two going out. It doesn't matter what you label I1, I2, I3 right now. And it doesn't matter in this case which one um, you know is going up, down, left, and right. You can rewrite these however you want. The goal is to solve for these. So whatever goes in must come out. So that's the first equation. Next up, now we're going to go ahead and trace two loops. And there's actually three loops here. There's this loop, this loop, and the outer loop. If you want to consider that, you only need two loops, though. So I'm going to call the top one loop one, the bottom one loop two. That doesn't matter. The direction doesn't matter. They don't even have to be the same direction. You just have to follow these rules. Sorry. So here we go. Top loop, starting at this point, ending this point, because that potential difference is going to equal zero as a result. So loop one, so zero equals. So I'm going to go. Now I'm going to slow down a beat. Follow me here. I'm going through 12 ohms, 18 volts, 16 volts, 4 ohms. Again, I'm going through resistor, battery, battery, resistor. Now the question is gain or lose voltage. Follow me here. I'm going to trace it again and tell me gain or lose. Here I'm going to gain because I'm going against I3. I3 is to the right. I'm tracing a path to the left. So gain 12 I3. Lose 18. Gain 16. Lose 4 I1. Because again, I'm going against I1. So again, I'm going to gain 12 I3. Lose 18. Gain 16. And gain 4 I1. Next up, loop two. Going this way and around, starting the junction and at the junction. So I'm going through eight ohm. What is that right there? I got to move it. I can't even see it anymore. Oops. Let's move. Nope. Move it out of the way. Move that. Uh, that works. Okay. So it's an eight ohm. Now let's move that one too. That little piece. There we go. Uh, move, move, move. Okay. Cool. All right. Haha. <laughs> going through eight ohm resistor, battery, 12 ohm resistor. So now ready, gain or lose. I'm going to lose 8i2 because I'm going with the current that I directed. So lose 8i2, gain 18, lose 12i3. Again, lose, gain, lose, because it's based off the direction the arrows for the current that I assign. So closed loop is zero. That's going to be lose 8i2, gain 18, lose 12i3. Three equations, three unknowns. 
If you're not able to use the graphing calculator or a matrix method, you have to solve a system of equations. So here we go. Next step is substitute in I1 and I2 for I3 here and here. So I'm going to write 0 equals 12I1 plus 12I2. Notice how I just did the distributive property immediately. Minus 18 plus 16 plus 4I1. You know what? I can just do minus 18 plus 16. That's easy enough. That would be a minus 2 plus 4I1. Over here, negative 8I2 plus 18. Again, distribute negative 12I1 minus 12I2. That was the substitution part. Next, I'm going to solve each of these equations for I2. Fastest way to do it is take your I2s in this case, so that negative 12I2, and you would subtract it over to the other side, negative 12I2, and you combine like terms. 12 plus 4I1 is 16I1 minus 2, and then divide over that negative 12 is I2. That's the first equation. This next one, take the negative 8 and negative 12, add the 20I2 over, so that would be 18 minus 12I1 divide by 20. So now we have I2 equals I2 equals, and now we set them equal to each other. I'll do over here. 16I1 minus 2 over negative 12 equals 18 minus 12I1 over 20. Cross multiply. Yes, you could like find a common factor of like 2 and simplify, but really I don't want to make an extra mistake here or any mistake for that matter. Okay, cross multiply. 16 times 20 is 320I1. Negative 2 times 20 is minus 40. Cross multiply over here. Negative 12 times 18 is negative 216. Negative 12 times 12 is plus 144I1. Making sure it all fits here. There you go. Subtract the 144 over, you'll get 176I1. Add the 40 over, you get negative 176. So I1 equals negative 1 amp. Okay, so I1 equals negative 1 amp. So now we go and we plug back in everywhere else. We can plug back into this one or to this one, doesn't matter. So if I plug in a negative 1 for I1, that'll be 18 plus 12 is 30, 30 over 20. I2 will equal 1.5 amps. Now I'll take both of those and plug back into here. So then I3 will equal negative 1 plus 1.5 will give you 0 0.5 amps. So now we have I1, I2, and I3. I'm going to move all this out of the way now because not that part. You can stay. Okay? This is a recording, so you always go back and see all the work I just did. That's the process to solve it, though. Move it. Move. Move. Okay, so what do we have? We have I1 equaled negative 1 amp. We had I2 equaled 1.5 amps, and we have I3 equals 0 0.5 amps. Now let's check. Going from the left junction to the right junction, going across the top wire, here we go. Going up, I'm going to go through a battery and then a resistor. So I'm going to go through the battery, I'm going to gain 16. Then I'm going to, I'm going against I1. So I'm going to, um, let's see, gain four times I1, which is four times negative one. That will give you 12 volts of potential from left to right. Now let's do the middle. You know, this problem is so mid. Okay, from left to right, sorry. I'm gonna gain 18. I'm gonna lose 12 I3. So I'm gonna gain 18, I'm gonna lose 12. I3 is 0.5. 18 minus six is 12 volts. Going down the bottom one, I'm going to go against I2 from left to right, so I'm going to gain 8I2. So on the bottom, I'm going to gain 8 times I2 is 1.5, which is 12 volts. There you go with currents, with checking, with dealing with loops, and all the rules that you need to know for this material dealing with resistors. I hope that helps your understanding of circuits.